I always equate Mother's Day, I hate Mother's Day. You know, my daughter messaged me this morning. She says, Mom, are you still going to testify? I know how you feel about Mother's Day. You know, I never celebrate Mother's Day. Yesterday was, last year was the first time I actually stayed at church and celebrated Mother's Day and actually went and spent time with my stepmother. And um, anyway, uh, I don't know where to start. So anyway, I'll, I'll just give you a bit of background. Um, I was born in the Philippines to a privileged family, you know. Um, we had maids, gardeners, you know, the works, you know. We lived in a mansion, you know, but um, money doesn't make you anything. My parents had their own dysfunctions. So, um, you know, my mum left us at four for another man and my dad to raise us, but not really my dad. It was my grandmother one year, another grandmother, and the maids used to watch us. And, you know, when you leave your kids with somebody that you don't know, things happen. You know, so, and my life was also violence. You know, man, I, I stuck my tongue out in the maid. I wore my dad's handprint for a week. You know, so that was the way we were brought up, you know, from my parents and, and their parents. So anyway, when I came to Australia when I was nine, and you have to understand, I never felt, I felt not wanted because we were just thrown from one family to another family, one country to another country. I came here, then I went back to, to the Philippines, no one could handle me, so I came back with my dad and my stepmom. And I was so rebellious at 16, I left home. And my dad said, don't ever come back. I never, I never came back. What do you know at 16? You know, um, so anyway, I was, uh, I came, I was born. I mean, not born. I was baptized in Jesus' name. <laughs> received the, yeah, and received the Holy Ghost under Bishop Tad Slack. You know, you know that scripture that says, once I was lost and now I'm found. That's what happened to me when I first came to know God. You know, I, I was just like, oh my God, God actually loves me, you know. And um, anyway, I, like sisters, I raised my kids here, but along the way life happens and I dropped the ball. I still had one foot out in the world, you know. Like you would get this worship service, like that was so anointing, we couldn't even do the preaching, that kind, you know. and. Um, but as life went on, you know, when Monday came, I was busy. Then the come Sunday, I was like, yeah, Jesus, help me, oh, you, know, you know, but I wasn't grounded in God. And I wasn't that role model to my kids, man. It was a smack, it was a this, it was a that, you know, my poor kids, you know. And um, so anyway, my kids, as they grew up, they backstep, you know. And my boys, because they had a domineering mother, single mother, um, you know, were rebellious and, you know, blah, 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 and I'm um, sorry. And um, anyway, so in 2015, my son said to me, Mom, I'll be back. I'm going to the shop. And he never came back. He was 21 years old and he took his own life. Well, that shattered me. That, that just, I can't equate or put into words how I felt, you know, and the devastation that it, it did to me and my family. So anyway, I was still coming to church for a year. You know, I used to bring Pastor Slack, you know, and I'd look at him and, he was such a role model and he would just do this because he couldn't get up, but he would still worship God. And I would sit next to him and I would go, oh my God, I am not worshiping God. There's no way, you know, I was full of hate and rage, self-loathing. That's what it is. You know, when my son died, I just felt shame. I hated myself, guilt, you name it, you know, and I was on the path of self-destruction, you know, and um, so I was here. The day we buried Bishop Slack, I said, I'm never coming back to this church. It was like, church had nothing to do with it anyway so for a year after that year I, I just went out drinking clubbing getting kicked out of clubs like shame you know and doing all these things because I was trying to appease what was in my you know that, that pain I was trying to find comfort wherever and I just wanted to hurt myself so bad that I don't want to feel the pain anymore you know but you know God never leaves you or forsakes you he is always there no matter what no matter what, those three years I backslid, yes, I, but he was there. He was there the whole time. And anyway, you know, more my testimony is about my son, you know, my son. I don't know if you ever met Jason. He started coming with me, but, you know, he's been in and out of jail 13 years, you know. And um, when I came back to church, I had a different perspective. It wasn't like I was before, man. I am sold out for God. 
whole heart, not one foot out. I am grounding in God this time around, man. I mean business. I am not mucking around. Um, so anyway, you know, my son and me just couldn't get along. And I would say to him, you're not living with me, get out. I don't care where you live, do whatever, you know. Um, <laughs> poor guy with his suitcase down the street. Um, I did ask him yesterday if I could test him, by the way. And um, anyway, so he was coming out of jail and I was like, no, God, no, what am I going to do? And God said, I want, he has to live with you. Why, God, why? You know, and anyway, I said, okay, God, I accept you will because... I'm at that place now. And I said, okay, God. So I fasted and I prayed and I said, okay, God, you change me to be the mother I should be. You show me how to love my son, love him the way a mother should. You know, and I'm telling you, God answers prayers. You know, he came out and not only that, I moved, I moved out of my comfort zone to Picton to get him out of that environment. Oh, that killed me too. And anyway, I love Picton now, but I didn't then. And anyway, so here we were. And I said to him, if you want to live with me, you have to come to church every Sunday, whether you like it or not, or else you're out. You know, I've consecrated my house. This is the way I live. This is it. You know, and anyway, he came to live with me and he came to church. And I'm telling you, I couldn't believe it. He, the triggers that used to trigger me, nothing, nothing would trigger me. Oh, it was love. We would do Bible studies together. Even though if he didn't like it, we would do Bible studies together. You know, and you know, he would repay it by cooking for me and oh, it was so good, cleaning and you know, it was really good. And you know, and then I'm walking with God and you're doing whatever you're doing. And then one day I'm at work and you get this phone call. Oh my God, that phone call always, I hate it. I get this phone call and he's hysterical. You know, I had to evacuate my classroom. Thank God I have an understanding boss, you know. You know, he's freaking out, I'm freaking out. All those triggers come back to, you know, my past. And anyway, the police took the phone off him and I said, put my son back on the phone right now. And put my son back on the phone. I said, listen to me. I said, it's not over. And I prayed over him. I plead the blood over him. And I said to him, listen, you, it is not over. I said, God hasn't finished with you. I love you. I'm going to be here. And that's where I'm going to do because I'm telling you, my goal is I have a list of all our kids that are backslidden. And I pray, I am going to pray that they come back. My son is going to come here and he's going to worship God. And I claim that in Jesus' name. Anyway, I just want to leave you with this scripture. Man, I had a whole like list. But, sorry guys, I'm a bit rough around the edges, but I'm telling you, I, I'm, a, I'm all right, you know. Anyway, I had my paper and I was looking for it everywhere. I was a bit like, so anyway, if you could put Joshua 1, 5, 7 to 9, please, because I don't have it here and, you know, my, I've got a trauma brain, so I can't remember everything. <laughs> um, it says, what does it say? Um, um, there shall be not, there shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses, so I'll be with thee. I will not fail thee, I will not forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. Um, for on his people shall thou divide an inheritance in the land which I swear unto the fathers to give them. Only be thou strong, and that's where I take it. Be thou strong and very courageous. Not depart out of my mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou may observe to do according to that all written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong. Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whatsoever thou goest. Then Joshua, anyway, yes. Yeah, so, and you know, Moses, sorry God. I'm, I am not, you know, I'm not out, but uh, I mean, you know, I don't speak properly because I'm nervous. But um, you know what Moses said in the last two words, be courageous. I know some people here are hurting, some mothers, their hearts are broken, you know, because our kids, and I take full responsibility. Yeah, my son made his choices, yes, but I should have been a better mother. I tried, but 
Anyway, I'm not putting it all on me. He's got to own up too, but, <laughs> you know, I am not going to give up. Don't give up, mothers. Don't give up. I gave up. I gave up. I gave up, but I am not. I, I love God with all my heart and all my soul. And if I could tell you without a shadow of a doubt that he loves you and he will be there for you, so don't give up.